Hello, and welcome to my video tutorial on Asgard's Fantasy Map Generator, a free and, in my opinion, the best map making and fantasy world software out there. In this video, I will be making an overview of the map generator itself, as well as how to make your own map from scratch. If you are already a little familiar with the Fantasy Map Generator, skip to the end of this video and I will essentially run down the entire process of painting your own map. I will also be following this up with a series of shorter videos, going over the different aspects of the Fantasy Map Generator in greater detail. Last thing before I get started, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below or join the Discord, linked in the About tab on the website itself. I will also link it in the description below. Alright, so first thing is finding your way to the website, which can be easily done just by googling Asgar. Once here, you are likely met with an interface similar to this with a randomly generated map complete already with all the elements offered by this generator. You can save any map you like by a .map file, which is the file type that this generator reads and loads from. Save .map files by selecting Machine in the Save menu. Dropbox is another option that will send a .map file to your Dropbox if you have one set up. A saving to browser will not save a physical copy onto your computer, and instead saves it to browser memory. By going into Options and Onload Behavior, you can select Open Last Saved Map, which will load instantly from your browser. While convenient, it is possible to lose this save while clearing the browser's cache or history, I believe. So. Uh, the most assured way to keep a .map save is to go through a uh, machine. Alright, so I think it is important first to detail how you can view the map, of which there are many ways. Through the Layers menu, you can select and deselect different options which show different parts of the map. These range from terrain to political to supplemental stuff like roads and a grid. There are already some given presets which already look pretty good. Notice how these layers are only compatible for as far as they are transparent. Let's say you want to see the height map, provinces, and cultures all at once. This looks terrible, but if you want to save it as a new preset, you can do so by clicking the plus button and typing a new preset like this. You can further customize how quite literally everything looks through the style menu, including transparency. As you can see, switching to the ancient preset gives a completely different look to the map, and you can further customize every other small aspect of this map through the styles. I will cover the styles feature more in a later video. Now I would like to show you how you can change the landmass entirely, but quickly before that there are some factors to consider even before editing the landmass, the points number. Located in the options menu, the points number determines the number of cells present on the map. Cells are the most basic unit in Asgard's generator, they determine the shape of everything and hold all the data for your map. Cells are like puzzle pieces, which make up the entirety of your map. So the default value of points number is 10,000 cells. Raising the points number adds more cells and makes them all smaller by comparison. This allows you to get more well-defined aspects like borders and coastlines, as well as the ability to place data like towns and cities closer together. Changes like this, which affect the whole map, can only be implemented by generating a completely new map, which is why I wanted to cover this first. Increasing the cells can sometimes also lead to increased lag due to the perform processing behind it all. One hundred thousand points, while looking very realistic, can be very taxing on your browser or computer. So I would generally tend to stick with fifty thousand or sixty thousand cells. However, if you are finding no trouble with one hundred thousand cells, feel free to go for it. For the purposes of demonstrating, I will go back to ten thousand cells. Now, to actually changing the landmass, height maps is the tool you want to look for. Going into height map editing, you can choose how you want the current map data to behave. Erase will erase all data and regenerate over the new landmass randomly based on your settings in the options menu. Keep will keep all the data on the in the cells and prevent you from editing the coastlines, as coastline editing will naturally change biome and river data. Risk, on the other hand, will do just that, keeping most of the data but altering biome and river data where coastlines have been changed. So I'm going to go with erase. Here in high map editing, you paint with a brush tool to raise or lower land. It works on a range from blue to green to red, from below sea level at blue to the tallest mountain heights at red. The height map ultimately determines the mountains, oceans, lowlands, and everything in between on your map. I should add that rivers rely on the height map, but you do not directly create them here. Save your changes by going to exit customization. Now that we've edited a bit, let's look at the biomes. Biomes are the environments that populate your map, and you can edit them in the same menu where you access the height map. If it's been a while since you've learned about like what a deciduous forest is, there are these small wiki links as buttons which conveniently provide you information about which biome is which. 
There are ways to generate biomes in more natural feeling using configure world menu. I prefer to do this, but I will be touching in greater detail on this in the next video. All right, so now we're down to designing the political landscape. However, you're gonna to wanna to add cultures first and then states. The type and name base of the culture contributes partly to the generation of a state. Of course, if you plan to override every name yourself, this hardly matters. So go to tools, cultures, and add or delete any culture you would like. Cultures are important because they determine the naming conventions used through what is called a name base. The name base is a cache of names based off of a region or pre-existing culture used for random name generation. So there are historical names like French, Greek, Roman, Nordic, Swahili, and fantasy ones like orcs, goblins, elves, and so on. There is also the ability to create your own. The generator uses these name bases to come up with completely new names for cities and states to sound similar to what you have selected, and adds a lot of variety to your world. Additionally, you can change the name of the JIT culture itself simply by clicking here and typing. Now we can move on to states. Like cultures, the names, number, and amount of countries called states is fully customizable, but states rely on culture for their naming convention. You can assign states through the options menu or for random assignment, or you can do the tools menu for manual. I should add that locking an option will make sure that the value stays fixed whenever you create a new map or alter any other detail. So I'm gonna actually use the tools and manually add a state. You can click the plus button on the menu here, and then on the map to create a new state anywhere you'd like. And it will create a capital city for that state. You can now proceed to paint the land of your state using this button here in the middle of the menu and painting to your desire of the stretch of the state. It is also a good idea to go to the regeneration menu, clicking here, and then clicking change state labels. This will make the label dynamically change as you paint the state, and it probably puts it in the most optimal position, though you can of course alter it as much as you like yourself. All right, you should be fully equipped to create your own map from scratch. Lastly, you can export your map in a variety of different ways, such as by PNG, JPEG, or SVG. This scale here determines how, result, how detailed the result is, and a higher scale will take up more storage space per export. Alright, and now for the best part of this program, which isn't the completely random maps, but the wealth of features which combine in such a way as to allow you to create your own map and add depth and history to it at the same time. As always, I will begin by selecting my points number, as I prefer to set it to 60,000 cells for well-defined features with minimal lag. Next, I will actually turn down the cultures, states, provinces, and religions number in the options menu to ensure that I get a blank database. I will leave towns to auto uh, because it will autofill essentially where it sees fit to add towns and cities. Uh, I find it tiring to place down every single town and city, especially for large scale maps. Now to edit the height map, I will erase the current one. Select lower elevation and set radius and power to max and proceed to sync your map. I should also mention that there is an image conversion feature on the left here where you can take a map from the web or even draw or paint one yourself and import it into this program. I will go into more detail about this feature in my next video. Now to paint the map how you like it. If you want to be realistic, it is a good idea to be aware of plate tectonics. Think of the land masses like uh, puzzle pieces fitting together, similar to South America and Africa. Once done with that, I will usually begin with biomes. However, the natural biome generation is usually pretty realistic, and I typically change this only by the configure world option. Notice how biomes like tundra and cold desert take over when I change the latitude towards the poles, while desert biomes spawn near the equator. You can even change global wind directions with which affect uh, precipitation. It's a lot, and I can go into more detail about these things in a later video. With biomes satisfied, time to place the cultures so that we have a name base for the states and bergs that we want to spawn. I'm going to make the eastern half uh, Greek and let's say the western half Iranian slash Persian. When you place down the culture, the dot in the center is the origin of the culture and is where it will expand from if you randomize its expansion, which you can do by clicking this button. If we want to make one more expensive than the other, notice how the result changes. The bergs which have been auto-placed have not had their names changed from whatever the default name base was.
So we can go now to Tools, Bergs, and this button which regenerates names based on the local culture. Finally, we can get to state editing. Holding shift lets you place many states when you add them, which is also possible for other features that use this plus button. Since I have no particular empires or countries in mind, I'm just going to place a bunch of them. I also don't want to paint over the map for the sake of brevity, so I will go to the regeneration menu to randomize their expansion and automatically paint territory. Just like that, my map is complete and already has a lot of depth to it. To add more, it is the same way to add religions, zones, and provinces. There are also a plethora of other tools here, which I will touch on in later videos. That's all for now though, and thank you for watching.